Don't get embarrassed, hold on. Yeah, that's better. Hey, yeah, well, and to get going a bit, but it's probably better for you. Yeah. Anyway, no, happy birthday. Thank you, darling. I'm, I'm oh, how's the day been? Oh, it's great so far, yeah. It, uh, <clears throat> we set the alarm for 2.22 in the morning, or yeah. 2.20 2 in the morning, so we woke up. And uh, what had happened uh, <clears throat> yesterday, you know, when you get old and crockety like me, <laughs> you get you get these yeah. dark spots on you. You know yeah. how you get, uh, you get these, I don't know what they call them, but you get your dark spots on your arms and all over the place where you don't want them. Yeah. And they yeah. always always show up where you don't want them. It's like hair loss, you know. Yeah. When you get my age, you lose the hair where you want it and it starts to grow where you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, uh, they start in the bloody... I was looking at this big one that's really giving me the horrors and uh, I was just doing something and talking to the girls and I started picking at it. Next thing, it peeled off. It's like it was stuck on there. It wasn't a pigmentation thing anymore. It had been raised up and pushed out of the skin and new skin had grown under it to get rid of this black spot. A yeah. dark brown spot. And I had about 20 of them on the right arm and several on the left arm, small ones on the left arm and that. So I've been picking them off all day yesterday and I was, there's a pile of bloody scabs on the... <laughs> got to get a vacuum cleaner out and pull it, pick them all up, right? So anyhow, uh, we're in bed and uh, I've had a, a, a very bad neck since I was a kid because my father used to punch me in the side of the head. Uh, and that was his hobby. You, you got to, you know, you got to hand it. Old oh, people have got to have hobbies, and uh, his hobby was beating his child. Right. And my mother used to say, "Don't punch him in the head, Reggie." Like instead of saying, "Don't punch my kid in at all," no, here he is. Every time he got pissed off, it built me across the head. And the funny thing he used to say to me, older when I got older, he'd say, "You'd argue with Christ, you would." And I'd say, "You are." <laughs> well, that had also get a couple of thumps on the side of the skull. And he was a, a powerful man. He was a wharf labourer, drive truck and all that kind of stuff. And his hands like dinner plates. And he'd belt me as hard as he could. Until I was about 12, I finally smacked him back. And then he didn't do it after that. Because I was, getting, I was getting too big for him. Because I was a very strong kid by the time. And I could take a punch because he taught me how to do it, right? So anyhow, it had damaged my neck. And uh, that had um, caused me a great deal of problems over the years. And even the girls here will... Would just a couple of days ago, would massage my neck and trying to get some relief out of it because uh, it's just something I got used to, you know. Yeah. Very painful. Anyhow, I'm laying in bed at 2:20 and I've got my head rolling it back and forth on the pillow. No pain. Wow. Gone. Oh, well, I had that happening for me because I've got similar to you. I've got chronic back and neck problems. Is that because of punching the head sometime or? Um, yeah, that's a little bit of that. <laughs> I hate <laughs> yeah, you know, probably part of it. Yeah. Well, hey, it's uh, it's very interesting, isn't it? Uh, so, the point is, I've I've been saying all along that I have to be the first to start to reach that point of showing immortality on the earth, which I've demonstrated a long time now for people trying to kill me. But uh, now it's the reverse of aging. Yeah. So that's starting. Oh. So that's good news. That's amazing. That's well. Diana. Yeah. Hello, Diana. Yeah, we're just getting a hello there from uh, your little mate up here. He's saying hello to you. Who's that? Joel. Oh, I can't hear him because of the echoing going on in the background. Oh, yeah, yeah Joel. we're going to be groomed. <laughs> How are you? Hello, you home? Yeah, good, thanks. Oh, it's, you know, hot and sweaty down here, but there's like a microwave in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I've got out of this, you know, it's, it's like, no, no sun, apparently, you know, but it's all over the cast and we, we feel like it's being microwave. Well, this is the whole point. It is getting hotter. Yeah. Uh, the, we looked at the Australian map of uh, weather the other day, or Ash did, and uh, they've had to put a new colour in because red, which is up to about 50 degrees uh, Celsius, what's that, 120, 130 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah. Uh, they've now got another one in there, it's called purple, which is over 50 degrees Celsius. You're kidding. No. And of course, here we are sitting up in Queensland where normally it would bake you, yep. but because of the Coriolis effect, uh, this is why we come north. And uh, because this, the temperature range is going to change from Queensland, because it's coming up probably five or six hundred miles, the centre of the heat wave, uh, normally where it would be in this area we are, 
is now south five hundred oh, miles. So okay. that's explaining it for me, thank you. Yeah, that's right. That's what it's all about. It's the that's Coriolis cool. effect. Yeah. Uh, the, the, we crossed the Milky Way galaxy equator, as you know. Yeah. And we've been we crossed that a long time ago. It was eleventh of uh, December last year. Yep. Yep. Right. So uh, this is what's happening. So now we've got this. Uh, the weather pattern has changed dramatically in America, Australia, Africa. If you look at Google Earth, go into Google Earth and look up the areas that you would think would be desert areas of, uh, of uh, Africa, and you'll find it's quite green. Yes, yes. All right. Ethiopia and places like that. Right. All right. So, uh, yeah, so they, they're doing well, whereas other parts of the world, um, uh, like the south part of Australia, it is uh, being baked. And of course, they're also having bad weather in the sense of storms. Sorry, could you just say that again? They're having bad weather in, in storms and yes, uh, yes. floods. We only just missed one on um, Wednesday night here. It looked like it was heading towards us, and it was like it was pretty fierce looking storm. And um, it actually went in another direction. Yeah, so right. Because I was battening down the hatches. Yeah. You know. well, I'm a bit upset at the moment. Sorry? I'm a bit upset at the moment. I can't find a cigarette lighter. Oh, it's here it is. It's all right. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I, when I was in Canada, my wife and I had separated, and uh, I rang her up one day, and I'm crying on the phone. And uh, she said, what's, what's the matter? <laughs> I don't know how to tell you. <laughs> I'm going like this, you see, and this carried on for about five years. You tell, what is it? And so oh, I got this, all this magnificent marijuana, and I can't find a cigarette lighter. <laughs> <laughs> well, she loves oh, smoking, don't right? <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, I just tried to find a cigarette lighter and I had some nice um, green herbal remedy there to be lit up. <laughs> is this your own stuff or is that Lou's? Um, I actually called him up the other week there. He stopped in here to ask me if I could give him a lift home with one of them big bags of dog food. Yeah. And I told him I was planning to come up to visit to and if he could get a nice birthday present organised for me to take up there, I'd appreciate it. And he was supposed to drop in on Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest. And um, he hasn't arrived, of course, so I've... Um, Sorry, Blow's birthday surprise, that's what it was going to be. Right. It just hasn't arrived. Right. Well, um, as I said about Lou, you can trust him as far as you can throw him. Yes, yes. Well, that's what it boils down to. So when, when Adam said all the plantation up there, and we had those 33 bloody uh, marijuana plants, the stuff that I'd, I'd raised and put my blood in it and bloody uh, yes. fat all over them and so forth, and uh, these things are growing like crazy. And I said, now, we'll give them to Lou. And I t oh, Adam said, yeah, and I'll give you some money. You'll get a hundred grand out of it. And I said, oh, yeah, right. I said, Lou will rip me off. Well, everyone was very surprised that I'd say that. Yes. Right. I said, look, it's how it is. He will rip me off. Yep. Right. Yep. And sure enough, he did. I'm actually quite shocked at his behaviour with that because I pulled him up. Uh, prior to me asking him when he came here to ask for a lift with the dog food, he dropped in here um, uh, just out of the blue one well, one afternoon, I think it was, when I not long talked to you. And Amber sitting here, and I said to him, listen, I've spoken to Ya, and he said that, um, you know, there should have been some other plants there. And he sat in my kitchen on that tent chair I've got, and he sat there and rolled his eyes around as if to say, oh, here we go, you know. He was in a rotten loot about um, uh, Darren, his mate at the time. And I didn't press him any further, but he knew I was annoyed and um, that I was asking him a pressing question and it put him in a very awkward situation. So I was happy Amber was sitting there listening to me, uh, putting it on him, but he didn't give me any answer back to what? Well, the point is... That said it all then. That said it all then. Yeah. He was left sort of gobsmacked and not knowing how to answer it because mm. he ripped off. Well, I, I, as I said, I've said right from day one that's what he'd do, but uh, yeah. um, he's got these plants out there. They're 13 magnificent trees that are out through the property. I mean, they're huge. Some of them are bloody 15 feet high, right? And the, the buds that were coming off them were bloody enormous. So uh, I said he's going to stick that in his arm because he's an ex-heroin addict, right? Yes, that's right. No, no, no he's not. Yes, he's, he's a heroin addict. Oh, well, there you go. Yes. 
But um, up until that point, um, I was surprised that he was trustworthy or, or had come across as being trustworthy. I shouldn't have saved his life. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure of that too at the moment, you know, um, because uh, it's horrible to know that people just... Well, he was facing a horrible death, so I said, oh, we've got to fix him. So he shocked me, you know. Yeah. So anyway, now he has to face me each time, so he's made himself very um, scared around me because he knows I know you're God. Yeah, well, he's, he's got part rhinoceros in him, see? Yeah, <laughs> bloody the skin that thick. Yeah. Mm. Um, I grew up with, you know, using needles for how old is he, you know, 40 years. Well, I tried to get him on the straight and narrow, but hey, yeah, whatever. But, um, so I've got to ban all that kind of shit. There's no hope for him, you know. There's no hope for him. He's full on drug addict and that's all there is to it. I was just hoping he'd, um, he'd actually come to his senses. But no way. No, no, not at all. No, you've got to, that stuff's got to be banned. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's only produced through, through Lizzie, you know, yeah. of the world. You know, yeah, that's right. Um, with the military mind in there. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's all, uh, England's all behind all these drugs, you know, when it all started. That's what they did to deal with China. Yeah, exactly. Right. Opium and uh, all sorts of stuff. And then India. So they was, they was trading this bloody uh, horrible crap, forcing them to take it. That's what the Boxer Revolution was all about. Yep. yep. And uh, there was one stage there, the Americans pulled in there with uh, the ships into uh, one of the ports of uh, China. And uh, they just started bombarding the city with, with these uh, you know, flotilla of guns until they submitted. Yeah. Right? So they, they caused the trade to occur. And that's what's going on in Afghanistan and, and um, all these countries that bring the drugs up. Oh. Clinton was involved. Yeah. See, when they, they used to bring the, the drugs into uh, uh, Clinton territory, Arkansas, and uh, that's where the kids were murdered down there because they had been out in the bush and they'd seen the uh, military planes flying in with all this to pick up the dope from or one or the other. It was either the military planes coming in. Now, the reason they use military planes uh, is that uh, some of these planes could be having uh, uh, weapons on board that can't be inspected by the immigration, yep. by the customs. Yep. And that's how they do it. Yep. They just fly where they bloody like. What are you going to stop us? A, 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 a plane coming, a B-52 B full of drugs coming in because they say, you know, you can't go in there, it's got a nuclear bomb on board. Yep. Well, shit. Right, yep. this is how they get away with it. I mean, all these Americans, Australians, they're all bloody, they're all, all tarred with the same snake. Oh, yeah, exactly, they're all insane. Oh, yeah. Um, and worse by the day. Mm. Wow, um, I've just seen there was another shooting as well. Two, two, uh, two school children. Where, in America or what? Uh, yeah, in America, I think. Yeah, well, it's probably bullshit. Yeah, another hoax. Yeah. Know, another Hollywood hoax. Um, there's only been one report on it. It was Channel 7 News. But my computer's been going terribly slow. I can barely get anything done these days. Um, yeah, mine's the same way. Yeah, um, oh. I, I just feel it's them. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, it's real with it. Mm. So that's what I put it down to. So Absolutely. I'm just kind of bear with it at the moment. But it, it just uh, tells me that... They acknowledge you when this happens, mm. you know. Um, that's what I tell everyone anyway. I just let them know straight out. I don't speak about the bush. I don't give a damn what anyone thinks because what I know is the truth. That's right. Okay? And that's, uh, there's nothing they can do to change that. Yeah. Nothing. And, and, and I'm fearless. Like, you know, I just bombard anyone I can with it. Um, so that's where I stand. Um, well, the first, the first fence you've got to cross is the guy you're talking to up the street. But he'll go in the pub and say, hey, this is a silly asshole up there. he say, this is Jesus, right? And the guys who is going to listen to this could not like this guy at all or could not be a friend or just someone standing close by. And the rumour starts going out. And that's the whole idea of it. Oh, that's why I stand in the shopping centre and um, when I'm in the line and I make sure I hold everyone up with... Um Starting up a conversation because they're stuck in the line. They can't move. Stand there and listen to me, and I make sure I'm loud enough so that everyone can. <laughs> huh? Oh yeah. This, this place. I wonder. I wonder where Amber got it from. She's a beauty. She's good <laughs> at it. And, um, what a kid. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh, she's so upset when I couldn't get up there. She's so looking forward to it. So oh, come on, next time. For days. 
They should be drinking it all the time. Uh, well, I had to for a while, and then we sort of got out of the um, mode of putting the water in there. Right. It was raining, and the bowls was just filling up out there with rainwater and stuff. But the um, uh, pick was on its, right on its behind, so I couldn't, couldn't find it until the last minute. So anyway, um, it, it passed away, and I had to bury it yesterday morning. So there was that as well. Everything was just going against me, going away. So... Um, I had to... Well, if, you, if, you see, if you keep the silver up to them, you, a, a tick will bite and die. Yeah, right. Um, or a parasite, right? We, we sort of went past the infestation of the ticks, and so I didn't worry about it anymore, because we weren't getting any more. Um, and that just must have been that odd one tick. Well, that's what Lou had, right? Yeah, what's it, yeah, what's yeah. it do? It attacks the brain. But I think it was because he's also on the heroin, you know. No, 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 no. He, he, had, he had a genuine... Tick uh, problem. Yes. Yeah. And that's why we uh, encephalitis here. Yes. Yeah. You, you don't get that any other way sick from a tip, tick. So when uh, the doctors had diagnosed encephalitis and they didn't know how to treat him, we hit him with the uh, the high gauze uh, magnetic fields. That, remember that machine we've got yeah. down there? Yeah. The yeah. And, and the claudial silver and the wrist treatment. Yeah. So we get the blood right. right. <clears throat> then we hit the, uh, the parasite. Uh, its offspring, if you like, in the sense of its poison, yeah. that is giving encephalitis to the brain of Lou, and that's why he was in such agony. Yeah. Was causing his brain to swell. Well, yeah, he just really was off the planet with it. Oh. Um, when I first seen <coughs> him. Well, as soon as, we, as soon as we hit him with the uh, treatment, uh, we let him have the, the wrist pulse of what, for two or three, four, five, six days or something. Yeah. And uh, he kept it on uh, 24-7. And of course, uh, it was like extracting wisdom teeth, getting it back off him. But the point is, uh, he was cured. Yes. And that is why I said later on, and, and he will rip me off. Yes, yes, I can't believe it. I did. That's what I said right from the start. Oh, no, he wouldn't be a good guy. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I showed him a couple of bloody miracles. One keeping yeah. him alive for a start. Well, he, he ripped you off. That's yeah. my mind. Yeah. <laughs> Rips off a god. He rips God off. He believes I'm God. That's no problem. <laughs> Fuck God. He wants to keep the money, right? <laughs> oh my God. Oh dear. But it's embarrassing, also for me. No, that, it fulfills prophecy. Ah, oh, it does. Mm. And I've got to wrap it in next time I see him as well. It fulfills prophecy. He let me down. That's why I did it. I didn't. Okay. I didn't do it to make money. Adam did it. I wanted to. Bring you some herbal remedy up there. <laughs> and, um, and he's just completely avoided it. 
I've got the perfect dope now. You smoke one and you don't want another one. It tastes like shit. Does it? Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you take one and that's it. No more, thank you. <laughs> the other stuff that I made originally, oh, I'd smoke five of those, no problem. Right? Stoned out of my tree. Yeah. Very enlightening, but uh, it, uh, it's not a happy way for me to be when the, the world is listening to every word I say and I'm saying, I'm going to kill you all the fucking Jews, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. So all you do is get their attention, silly bastards, run. Right? Uh, what to do with? But God is love, right? How can I kill anybody? I can't ever kill an ant. Yeah. Well, this is why you're talking about... Asher, on the other hand, is no problem. Well, so you know, you're healing him, you're not killing him. Yeah. You've got to well, I shouldn't have to be copying for him, he's not going to kill me. <laughs> you know? Who knows where he said that? Right. So, but it did say... Uh, no, I've got video, so I should dig it out. The video of Lou, he's a wild looking Greek. And um, he came from around the same area I come from in Sydney. That's right. And, uh, no, but he he went to the places I wouldn't go. Well, he... Right. I'm older than him, and there's just some very evil places around in Sydney that time I wouldn't go. Yeah. Right. So I, I never went to the, uh, well, the brothels, for example, never even walked down the bloody street. This mate of mine, Byron. I went to school with him, he's born on January the 1st, same age as me. And uh, he was always like, hanging around the brothels. Like, what the fuck for? Right? Palmer Street it was. Palmer Street and Palmer Lane. Palmer Street? Yeah. I have heard of that. I think I walked I through it I once. I, I sort of got a, I got a memory of it. Uh, whether I walked through it on a Sunday at church time or something like that, uh, when there's no one in, in the brothels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They were all worn out from the week's work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to say, I had to say something funny. Well, I lived, I lived on a street uh, where there were brothels when I was uh, 15 years of age. That must have been an eye opener for you at that age? Well, uh, yes. Um, I had a dog, Ginger, as her name was, and my father was notorious. His favourite joke when the rallies came around was saying that... Uh, be, because he had to drive a truck, right? Bull truck. And uh, he'd be driving past the dog pound and he'd, Sam Cusack would sing out that the guy's in charge of the dog pound in the gas chamber there. And uh, he'd say, uh, Got any dogs today, Reg? <laughs> no, no, not maybe next week, mate. <laughs> and my dogs would disappear. I'd get a dog, Australia'd come in, I'd look after it and love it, and next thing a dog would disappear. So I had this dog, Ginger. Yeah, and I, um, I had one called Ginger as well. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. What colour was it? <laughs> <laughs> it? Um, uh, mostly bingo. <laughs> yeah, yes. bingo colour. Yes. Sunny Owl Ginger. So, uh, I'll leave home. I'm working with, at Ainsworth Consolidated Industries, I think it was my second job. And I had this old uh, 1929 Chef soft top. And... Uh, the starter motor was bucket. All the cogs had been worn off, so I welded cogs back on and welded this bloody starter motor to the uh, framework. Thing. And uh, it would start. I got it to start. So this is this old car. Anyhow, I've got to look somewhere. I was earning five pounds, five guineas a week I was earning. And I think it was uh, five guineas a week for where I was staying was uh, bed and breakfast, but it was, a, was also a brothel. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't know, I was a kid, right? And uh, I had 25 cents, so I'd go and get spaghetti bolognese at the little sp uh, wog shop down the road. And then they'd give me 25 cents left for petrol and dog food and shit like that. Something. So if I got to work a Saturday, what I'd go an extra pound, right? Dog food? Yeah, I'd like to feed my dog, I'd have a dog with me. Okay. Ginger, I, I, t I left home to save it from going to the gas chamber. Ah, oh, right. Okay. right. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, uh, what happened was the dog got away up the cross and um, I never seen it again. <laughs> Poor thing. Right. So that was when I was 15 years of age. Yeah, but it, it, well, I... it showed me the evil. Of the Jews owned the age worth consolidated where I was working and they were making all the poker machines, which we call, you call in America, Anyone's going to listen to this? Uh, one armed bandits. Oh, right. uh, yeah, that's what we call them two and two. Yeah. Uh, and where I come from in the western suburbs. One, that's right. One armed bandits. That's, that's right. 
Now, I was there, now I'm 15 years of age, and uh, I'm driving without a licence, of course, and there was a uh, area at the side of the, the building and where they would store the uh, finished poker machines and they had them all in shipping off to Las Vegas or wherever. And um, this guy was going to commit suicide. And he's up in the high part, 30 feet up, and uh, he's distraught and he wants to commit suicide. Something terrible had happened. Uh, poor man was yeah. lost terribly. Maybe his kids died or something. Yeah, yeah, tragic, yeah. Something tragic. And this copper was there, this detective. And he says something to him to make him jump. Go ahead. Oh, really? Yeah, and the guy died dead first onto the concrete. He did do it? He did do it. Oh, my God. So this is my first experience of the desperation of seeing. Yeah. I'd already suffered the the fate of the Holocaust in the sense of uh, what's it like to have your child taken to a gas chamber and then your father who took it there taunts you with it every day yeah. and can and beats you at, at the same time. Yeah. And he's supposed to be a good man, but genetically he is the king. Yeah, yeah. No. Imagine having that prick as a king. Yeah. Wow. Well, and my mother, no compassion. What's wrong? Yeah. She let it happen. Yeah, I've seen that myself. She let him beat me and let him torment me and take my dogs away to the dog pound. Yeah. Now, as a kid, he went to the same school I went to, St Bernard's down Botany Road, Botany. And the nuns used to get him to drown the kittens. Oh, goodness so, me. Oh, that is horrific for any child to have to know. Yeah. Um, I had a pet. I had a, a pet duck, and he beheaded it before my eyes. Oh, that, that, that's just horrible. Then he wanted me to eat it. Ah, oh. took it. Oh, that's just you know, really is over the top, isn't it? For any child to have to experience something like that, they don't know how to. She, she should have been queen. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. She let it happen. Ah, oh, that's crazy. No compassion, sir. Eh? Yeah. Wow. It's <laughs> always So, as it turns out, the Holocaust didn't happen anyhow. <laughs> oh. The word didn't exist at the time it was supposed to be happening. <laughs> it was an invented word, but 30 years ago. And we've got people like um, uh, David... Um, Berninsky, who is debating with uh, evolutionists that the big gap is no evidence for evolution and asks all these questions, which of course, how can a, a cow or a moose suddenly become a whale, right? <laughs> Just for well, the skin oh, is yeah. different. Yeah, the skin's not waterproof for a start, and why the fuck would they want it? Right? <laughs> they start munching on what a cow munches on. So, creation is all happening all at once on the same time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so, for anyone who, who's even considering bullshit evolution, <laughs> you know, uh, there's no, I don't think it's my husband or anyone who said to suck his ass. That's a good, it's a good tool to get rid of them, right? Absolutely. Like if you're not on my team, you're not getting in. But they say the road to destruction is wide, but the road to salvation is narrow. Absolutely. Like guys and needles. Yeah. That's why it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And I said that... That's here, right? On the earth. Years ago. <laughs> and um, I, until I heard you explain that, I, I couldn't quite get it, you know? Um, then again, I was pretty naive and, and it really wasn't with it back then <laughs> when I first heard that. No, the soul wakes you up eventually. But... Um, the soul saying, oh, what the fuck, there's more on going on about until you get about 37 years of age, so now wake the fuck up, right? Yes. And the soul is telling the idiot on the outside the flesh bed to say, get your mind together, wake up. Yes. <laughs> um, this is uh, reality. All I see is, you know, uh, people are just totally losing it, and, and uh, I don't know where their heads are at. It's unbelievable, you know? Well, this, this David Belinsky's a Jew. And because uh, he's arguing the point against mathematically and so forth, the extraordinary odds is like a trillion times a trillion times a trillion times a trillion to one that this could be accident, right? So he's he's doing a very, very good job, but he's a Jew, yeah, right? He's not a Christian. He doesn't believe in Jesus, 
he is getting, he does mention the Holocaust, that his grandfather died in the Holocaust. Right? He probably would have died on the same date had he been living on the French River fucking era. Right? The point is, he's getting paid compensation because he's the son of Jews that lived through the Holocaust, mind you, his parents got through it, they spent four years. Yeah, that's it, yeah. What the argument is, if there's a Holocaust and German, Germany wanted to get rid of you, they'd have a pit duck. They'd bring the train in, get off, fucking bang, one bullet, bury the bodies with a bulldozer, right. move along. They wouldn't entertain you for four years so you get so starved that you end up dying of typhus. And why would they bother building any concentration camps? They would have done If they were going to burn them, they would have burned them. Auschwitz was built in 1948 after the oh. fucking war. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the bloody gas ovens, or the, the gas, uh, where they're supposed to gas every, everyone, that was built after the war. <laughs> and they felt it wrong in here. And thank God all the truth coming out about it. Yeah. I, had, I had buddies that was actually went into Dachau. And... Uh, he said the tanks that pushed all the bodies and made the trenches, right, because the whole place, had, that everyone was so emancipated because America and England had bombed all the food producing in Germany. Yep. They had no food. Everyone starved in Germany. Yep. So when you see those bodies laying there, yep. right, emancipated and dying, that's how the rest of Germany was. Well, so right? my mother-in-law was... Uh, well, there's 50 million of them asking for Polish, and they didn't get Holocaust. Yeah. So I know about that, you know, um, and their friends and relatives, I was just talking this morning, my sister on the phone, we remember back when we were children, you know, um, my brother-in-law's um, parents' friends, you know, and spending Christmas with Polish people, German people, I never heard them talking about any fucking Holocaust. Yeah, that's right. So I know personally, you know. Yeah, I know Jews that come through the wall. Oh. They had the tattoos on their arms, but they're all yeah, numbered. Yeah, once had the tattoos. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, they, they didn't want to do that. They had to do it. It was IBM. Talk about any Holocaust? Hmm. So they had to know who died. You see, that's what the tattoo was all about. A number. Yeah. If someone dies, if their number doesn't show up after the war's over, because they're predicting ahead that this is going to end eventually, that the, they always kept meticulous records. The Germans. They're, they're like the Japanese. Yeah. They're accountants. That's right. Yeah. Fastidious. And it was David Irving that went over there and actually worked in uh, Dresden and found out that Dresden had lost 140,000 people in 20 minutes when it was firebombed by England. Yeah, yeah. And he could not believe this possible. Then he realised that all of British history, the history is written by the victor. That's it. Right. So obviously... I see uh, that, that Irving um, video. So Hitler was the same, eh? Yeah, yeah, Hitler was the same. Oh, yeah. Hitler. Absolutely. <laughs> and geez, that affected everyone with shit. I always said he didn't go quite too far. Yeah, well, we wouldn't have problems we've got today. See, he took it literally what I said as Jesus, which was to love your enemy. Yeah. That's what he did. Right? It was the children he was protecting. He didn't have too much time for the oldies because he knew what slime they were. Yeah. He said they were, they were like maggots in a bloody festering sore. Yeah, exactly. Well, had to be rooted out. He said, but the children. Yeah. What do you do with them? You can educate them. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's right. Mm. You know, before they got a chance to be brainwashed. Wow. Okay, so here we are today. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm de-aging as I speak. Pardon? I'm de-aging as I speak. I'm a bit worried. The girls are going to town. They might come in and think I'm a stranger. Oh, but they're there at the moment. So boys, boys say. Hey? Does you and Joey? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you tell her about Ashton's stump this morning? <laughs> no, uh, she took a stumble down the bloody stairs. It's in the stars, of course. So I told her not to do it. So she goes ch charging up the stairs and asks how red she goes. Oh, no. Yeah. I told her not to. Then electrocuted herself over there. Yeah, then, <laughs> then Karen, she electrocutes herself. She's got a big flat feet beside me. and kicks over this bottle of water that I'd made specially. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I used electrolysis and silver and everything else I could think of put in it. But she knocked it over, spits it all over the, all the electrical stuff, so you've got plugs all over the floor. Oh right? no! Yeah. And got that. Now, yeah, this bloody new bloody grand piano we got, right? But what they do, they put in a, to look nice, a cup of gravel, <laughs> right, with the red beads 
on the fucking piano, right? And, and the cat gets up there, bang, knocks it over, which she always does, and all these little bloody bits of granite fall down into oh, the keys I've got to get oh. out, right? And I can't take the piano to pieces. Oh. Right? I was just getting good at it, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh. Okay. How do you like me piano playing? Come up with some device. Yeah, I did. I got it out. You suck it all out? Yeah, I got it out. Oh, you did? Yeah. What's that? Oh. Bits of wire with, with sticky tape on the end of it and all those kind of fishing, like fishing for termites. And I learned it off, yeah, off the chimpanzees. Okay. Uh, when did this all happen? <laughs> oh, about three weeks ago. Just the other day or something? No, about three weeks ago, something like that. Four weeks ago. Oh, okay. This uh, echoing on the phone is really hard to hold a conversation. Yeah. Uh, Right, even when you put the videos up, yeah. um, a lot of them are echoing. And yeah, well they're doing that to you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I reckon too. They can't do anything about it, so you've just got to read lips. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> makes me listen a lot harder. <laughs> hey, that's the point. Oh. I met a man once who was a, uh, a uh, encyclopedia salesman recruiting officer for the Britannica. And when you speak to him, as they're interviewing you, see if you want to be a salesman or not. I went in to see because I was desperate, I needed money. And uh, <clears throat> as he's talking to you, he'd be talking like that, then his voice would get quieter and quieter and quieter. And he'd end up whispering, his lips would be moving and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> so what did I do? See you later, idiot. Well, <laughs> I didn't go to become tricked into listening intently and reading his lips. Yeah. Right? I said, oh, no way, it's bullshit. Encyclopedia Britannica, and owned by Sears Roebuck in the United States, which is Simpson Sears, right? Which is uh, uh, Simpson and Simpson, I think it was in Canada, one of those. Which is the largest catalog distributing uh, company in America, which is totally Jewish. They own the Britannica. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. That's so I I bought the Britannica, and I was reading it to see what they said, and they had everything changed. Right. <laughs> I took a Britannica to Africa for God's sake. I had to be there and uh, on uh, from Chingola in Africa. I had to be there when the moon bullshit walk was going to be on. Yeah, yeah. Because what they've done, they with the latitude and latitudes of it, it spells out the devil. Yeah. Right. So with me being in Chingola, it adds the distance. So you go Apollo 11, 12. No, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, down to Chingola where I was, back up to Jerusalem or to the North Pole. It spells out Christ and Jesus. Okay. Well, so it identifies me being there in the bullshit moon world, huh? which I proved within two seconds looking at one photograph. Yes. They're using mercury vapour lamps. Um, right? You know. <laughs> How did they... Don't everyone down to that point, you know? Because they know Christ's coming. Uh, believingly, crap! No, they know Christ's coming. Yes, yes. We will forbid Christ, Protocol 14. Right. They know he's a man, the idiots. Like, just by writing that in the book, they're saying a man is coming who is Christ. Not in the clouds. Clouds means intelligence. Depending on, on uh, what morphology, you're at at the time, whether you're an Essene thinking person or a, or a Pauline thinking person or a Catholic thinking person, <coughs> it's all clouds of, of confusion. So the reality is it comes in the clouds which the confused people can't read, yeah. which is intelligence. Right? You, get, you don't think God's going to let you get away with this, do you? <laughs> I'm glad my parents weren't um, dumped down by a religion or yeah, any of that, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, that were bloody atheists. But I don't blame anyone for being atheist. That's what they tell me. Do you think I give a fuck? Well, whoever comes to the door, but in reality, they already have their beliefs. I've, go, I've been into the light. Right? Yes, <laughs> These people have these near-death experiences. I've been into the light and Jesus spoke to me. <laughs> it's a lie, right? I didn't speak to right? Your imagination is like the DMT thing that, yes. that Lou and Dan takes. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, but it's the morphology that's been given to them by this, the suggestions of the Tavistock industry of control, who are Jews, who yeah. control the media, who give you the thoughts and the movies and the music to think in such a direction. Yeah. 
This what I've had. They're smarter than you are because you're dumbed down. And they still can't fucking get it. That's right. And, and you say, come they are frightened of you because right. when you get your intellect, you're God. Yeah. Right? They've got to keep you dumbed down. Uh, Great, Fat Oaks, but you should see an Arby Bay. It's like, you don't have to go to a circus. It doesn't make any money when they come to town. <laughs> I tell you, they got nothing compared to what you see walking in and out of the fucking unemployment office. <laughs> right, yeah. having in tattoos, women with asses bloody a foot and a half wide each side. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And it's all been put, I told, um, what's her name? Uh, I sang her a song on the internet. Who was I singing to? Prime Minister. Oh, Gillard. Gillard. Yeah. Yeah, I said to her, now you go into Parliament and you tell all the people, all these medical people, they get fucked. This is how you cure people. Yes. It's already been done in Fiji and New Guinea and in Central Australia. They know all that. They know it. I'm telling Julia Gillard to do it. Yeah, and you know. That's a happy yeah. birthday present for me. I'm thinking they can go with them when we, we got the fucking truth. <laughs> and the truth. They're looking so Send another angel, yes, dear. It's, it's just beyond belief, you know? It's, yeah. It's still trying to spill this garbage to everyone. Yeah. Um, but it's not, it's not working for, for us anyway. We know the truth and we're just looking at these fools. They're making such idiots of themselves. Anyway, it's unbelievable. How could people like that be running the country? Of course they're not. They're just public. <laughs> What's a prophecy? The devil's going to be in charge, right? They'll run all countries. Julia Gillard is one of them. They're giving her opportunity to, right, to not to build a scaffold for her own education, right? Which is, tell the truth for a fucking change. There is this lunatic back, right? She can be sarcastic if she likes. It says, this is how you cure people. Yeah. He also thinks he's Jesus. Okay, he's a mental case, but he is curing people. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? I always tell the truth. I, you know, I always tell the truth to my constituents. To the people, you can trust me. And, um, she and said so. You know, there's one thing Lou can't deny. You know, he says that you cured him. Hey. Eh? Uh, that's one thing Lou can't deny is that you cured him. <laughs> well, he don't give a fuck, right? That's the whole point. You see, it doesn't matter what good you do for a person. They're either a good person or they're not, and they will respond in kind, right? Because they are com kind and compassion. Because kindness and compassion are what you would Lou. But he's not kind and compassionate. Uh, to help a poor old man that's his mate that he knows is God, he don't give a fuck, right? Well, obviously not. Therefore, now. he's not one of the chaps, is he? Um, he's a witness. He, pardon? He's a witness. He's yes. building his own execution. Lou. Exactly. He's a witness. Yes. Tell him I said so. If you're listening to this word at the moment, this ought to be some fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> I've been laughing my guts off at him. <laughs> See, he... Well, I'll upload it on YouTube, has that? You know, he... Me as his friend, but he knows I'm straight up to him, so he really can't handle me too much. You know, it's a small dose. Well, that's why he's guilty, yes, right? Because he knows. He's rich and guilty. I've proven to him that you're God because you've proved it to me you're God, and he can't cop it because he still wants to take his drug. That's right. And if, if he acknowledges that you're God, which he knows you are, then he can't take his damn drug because it doesn't make any fucking sense anymore, does it? So what's going to happen? He's going to drop dead, right? Unbelievable! He's going to drop dead. And I've got my trees in there growing like monstrous bloody 14, 15 foot high trees. They're so high some of them are bending over and tearing the soil up. They're monsters. I own it! They're my trees! <laughs> they will be dead soon, don't worry about it. And the dog's already like me. No wonder I didn't see him for months after that. Well, just tell him. Just say, hey, you talked to me on the phone. I said, look, your dogs love me already. He knows that because that surprised him. When I could play with these dogs and yeah. these things eat people. Yeah, right? exactly. And I'm wrestling the big one to the ground, right, and playing with his, with his wife and all this kind of thing because he had two bitches and another male. Yeah. Right? And he used to bite him, bite the shit out of him at the same time. I said, yeah, I well, know. This is your territory, mate. No worries, man. And I said, go, go, on. go get him. So he was jumping around and lick, licking me all over, right? Lou was absolutely stunned. He's absolutely because no one would normally jump for any of these dogs unless, you know. So tell him, yeah. right? He's going to be dead soon. I'm taking over. They're my trees and I'll take over your dogs too. Yeah, yeah. He's going to tell him that one. Tell him. That's right, I will. Tell him he's got a week. That's if he bothers to come back here again. No, next time you see him. Oh, oh, oh. He just has made himself scarcer and scarcer. Of course he is. He's guilty, isn't he? He knows what's coming. Absolutely. He has to, mate.
Look, he's going into DMT and all the shit that he takes and heroin and bloody ever. So his mind is out there. And when he goes out there, he knows what's happening because his mate Dan, he's done the same thing. He says, you're on the, on the, you can go to your mind and you are there. There's aliens and all this shit that have been put in your mind because it's all subliminal and the drugs, of course, are manufactured to do just that. Yep. Well, I don't care. Darren, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> You're that dumb to go there. See you later. I don't want you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway, they're just so infatuated with their drugs. Well, I, um, hey, it's a Babylonian story, though. They would rather um, fulfill the protocol 14 and for big Christ and have their fucking drugs. Because they've got to stand up, haven't they? Uh, well, I think you ask every time I see them. They hate me. Yeah, really, they do, because I, they know I won't shut up about it. You know? What about the boomers up the street? They know that they have to um, reject you, which fulfills prophecy. And um, oh, go, go and see, go and see your, your, your uh, go and see the Aboriginals. Oh, they're just a fuck in the head, mate. No, tell them this. You're going to get one of them, right? So he's the guy that went over when the H1N1 flu was coming in, right? He knows they were going to try and kill you because you're the sovereign owners of Australia. Yep. So he went to Urundumu where one was reported to have died. And of course, we get there, and there's this great big fat turd, he's talking to us, and he says, oh, no, I've been here for 18 months more. There's no little old lady that had been there for 30 years that we had met a man that she had helped the day before in a caravan park when our ash is out converting people, and yap and on as she do at the dishes, <laughs> right? And this guy said, oh, are you going to your Aduno? She said, yeah. She said, I'll say hello to Helen, or whatever her name is. Uh, to help, thanks for helping with the tyre yesterday. Right? Now, in the meantime, our FBI, CIA, ASIO, Mossad goes up there and they remove the little old lady. Who knows? Could have even killed her if she wasn't going to go quietly. Right? Yeah. And they go take over and say, no, we've been here for 18 months and no one's died here. When it was in the newspaper, which you can't believe in here, yeah. that the first death for the H1N1. Tell them that. Well, and I gave it to all the Aboriginals. One of the, um, now I went to a conversation the other week with Darren and he uh, revealed to me one of the Aboriginals here, which more or less keeps to himself, you know, he's um, a bit of a straight face. Um, and he, he keeps insisting that Darren's Aboriginal when he's Greek. And he said, look, he actually revealed to me that um, that uh, he himself, this guy, Aboriginal guy, has um, an old helmet. Okay, now because I was talking about Pedro Fernando de Quiros. So yeah, right. Patient, okay? right. And I said to this is what I was telling Darren, and it's ever with Tony. I mean, he's a little nine year old, education is that old here, about Pedro Fernando de Quiros. Anyway, so. Yeah, what was the date he showed up in 1606? Now, wait, this guy has. Has the, the helmet. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, a yeah, Spanish. That's an Aboriginal from here. Yeah, a Spanish helmet. I found about. I said, well, do you know whose helmet that is? And I fucking told him. Yeah. So then there's a helmet. Yeah, that's right. Off the ship. Okay, exactly. So that's here, somewhere in Memphis. So what they do, they declared it at the New Hebrides. Uh, that's where the boys up there turn to girls, or the girls turn to boys at a certain age. Right. And that's uh, called the New He Brides. And he put a, a spear declaring it is now the property of uh, Christ. Yep. Not of Spain or Portugal, of Christ. Yep. And he put his helmet on it. Yep. So there's a spear and a helmet. Yep. That's, that's what the guy's got. Well, that's it. That's Fred Fernandez de Queros, who, on behalf of Jesus Christ, yep. declared all of the southern hemisphere to the south pole that's all around the world including yes. south america exactly. south africa and in the name of jesus and the gospel will be not the bible yes. the gospel will be, will be preached that's to it. all creatures yep and uh, for the rest of your remedy that's why they're trying to kill all the aboriginals that's why i went right. stop it now he's taken that well hidden but he revealed it to uh Darren. And then Darren revealed it to me. And right. so I remembered. It was about a week ago. He'd um, been hitchhiking and he called me up and he said, Oh, do you mind if I crash at your place? It was getting late at night. Darren? 
someone else they'll dream about it it's a, a thought uh, their thoughts are going out like little uh, transmitters yes. to other people in their general vicinity or worldwide for that matter and uh, the thought is going out doesn't matter whether they That's right. it's I, the, so the subconscious doesn't make any judgment Lenny doesn't realize even though he might be annoyed because he got popped up I think he doesn't realize that that actually checkmates the system yeah that checkmates the system that means that the system that No Bernard court for Lenny. Uh, about Lenny and about the, you giving him the declaration knows a claim to the throne. Yeah, to um, the court. And handed to Judge Linden. Okay? Yeah. So because the people know this area and the judge that sits there, Linden, they all know about him. And I said, well, he's the man who's got it. So I, I use that constantly. So he wasn't too happy. Pardon? <laughs> he wasn't too happy when I was in court watching Lenny. Yeah. Treason, yeah. And neither were the cops when I told them to get their hands off Asherah or mm. I'm going to have them charged. Yeah. When they went to take the phone off her, you know? That's right. Because um, she was filming. And I said to the guy, what's the name? You know, show me, a, he didn't have a name. He only had a number on me. Well, that's the first time I ever knew that cops don't have a name as well as a number. Right. Um, you know, and then the Freemasons having their big shing dig over across the road in the church there. Yeah? That's right. <laughs> Shooking off, she got off of uh, crazy uh, clay feet, right? Clay feet, yeah. So now she can't talk. <laughs> so I'm I'm sitting there with these three guys, and we've got uh, was it Mike, the, the one who owns the thing, who just runs the show? Um, no, he, he, uh, it's, it's not acting like the Yeah, but what did, did Mike did Mike find out about it and the Queen find out about it?
boy who's running the radio show. If, if you get it, they're going to shut it down and they still haven't got it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I mean, they've never had something like this happen in the town before. They've got to be, surely, some brain up top there working that's going to tell them there's something about you. <laughs> Oh my God! What so about? What about? It's a battle here for me, mate. But I'm having a go, you know. Oh, um, what about the night these idiots stole my computer? Oh, and that as well. Uh, and then I've I set them up, right? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I, every time I've seen the cops, I've dragged instead of them. Look, it was an IBM piece of shit, anyhow. I want to talk to you. you no, know? <laughs> I'm sure they avoid me purposely now because they had to listen to Amber as well. Um, telling them that your reincarnated Christ, okay? <laughs> and Astra's reincarnated Mark Maglin. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm telling them an ATO's broken into the house and stolen Christ's computer. And um, it's got all the information of reincarnation, um, taking down the New World Order with it all, blah, 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 you know? <laughs> now, the cops have got to have a look at that. Right. Not only have they got to look at it, they've got to look at it several different people from all walks of their sick society to look at it, to make a, de a decision on what to do with this strange old bastard, right? Yeah, and the strange bitch is winching at him, me. Strange <laughs> old bastard that's getting younger every day, you know. But the thing is, I've got a, um, a case number for that too, so they had to give me a case number. Yeah. But when he was ringing me up to tell me about the case number, that was the afternoon where Amber seen Asio again up the top of the driveway, hiding at the top of the driveway in camouflage gear. That's right. <laughs> and, and so the cop, I'm just about to ring the cop up about it, and he rings me, and I go, oh, I said, um, I was just about to call you, you know. And he said, well, I'll bring up the case number for you um, about the computers that's been stolen. He said, um, could you pass it to your visitor? He wouldn't say your name. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, he had to fulfill the protocol 14. And um, I, I said, well, um, we've just had another incident and this is what's happened. He said, well, um, listen, hang on. He goes, no, I'll come out there. So five minutes later he turns up and, and Amber fills him in on her experience as she was coming home from school down the driveway. She went to check the mail, you know. Um, and the lid, the mailbox is broken, so she's picking it up off the ground and she sees the guy in camouflage gear hiding in the bush. Totally covered up from, um, hands. What an idea. You couldn't see none of him. This is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding me? Oh, dear. It's never come to her. God, she says to the guy, she goes, what are you doing hiding there? She goes, if you don't go, she goes, I'm going to get my mother called cops, you know. So she comes down to me and she tells me this. I said, shit, okay, I'm going to grab the phone, Amber. Just go out round the back, the other side of the house, and see if the guy's still there if you can. You know, and I'm watching her while I'm walking outside with the phone. And um, a motorbike pulls up. Um, the guy on the motorbike was dressed in a white shirt, um, business pants, and um, she said, describes the shoes like, you know, workman's shoes, she said. Um, he had a pair of sunglasses on, described all the bikes. So he's riding the bike, he jumps on the back, and the guy in the camo jumps on the front, and they go. <laughs> Are you kidding me? A guy with camo and, he, and a business dress guy. <laughs> dress and business guy. So anyway, we tell the cops all this, and then um, uh, one of them was the Toretto, David Toretto, he's the cop who gave me the uh, uh, case number. What and was then, the case number, do you remember? Yeah, I don't. What's the case number? Um, I actually give it to Ash. I'm going to find it right now, actually. All right. I've got my glasses on here. Okay, so it's Senior, uh, senior Constable David Toretto. T-A-R-A-N-T-O. Yeah. And the time was 12.30 p.m. on the 16th. Hold on, I'm going to write this down. Yeah. What's he Mexican, is he? Uh, no, it sounds strange. It's only a young well, guy. I thought Doritos were Mexican. Pardon? I thought Doritos were Mexican. Uh, T. Doritos. Yeah. Okay. How do you spell it? T what? T A R. Yeah. A N T O. Yeah. 
What's his first name? David. David. Senior Constable. Senior Constable. And uh, remember, this was the day after when I went in to report. So it's the 16th of the 5th. 2011. He put down 2012, though. Oh! That's what I, it's got here. You'll see it yourself. He's just got 12. Well, that's interesting. It hasn't got, you know, it's like 2011. It's just got 12 written there. That's very interesting because I've never picked that up before. Yeah. Um, so that it was at uh, 12.30 p.m. He, uh, the report went in. That was when you went over to buy a new phone for me. Over to Lismore. And um, so the case number is E. E for Edward. Yeah. Four eight four six eight zero four two. You sound like a bloody Julian date. Right out. I'll look it up. Uh, yeah. And now listen. Um, the phone number. Okay. I'll give you that as well. So it's O two. Yeah. Double six eight nine. O two. Double six eight nine. One two. One two. Four four. Four four. Now fact number is O two. Hold on, O two, yeah. Six six. Yeah. Eight nine. Yeah. One one. One four, one. Four four. Four four. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, that's my date yeah, of birth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's look the number up, 6689, see what we get. <laughs> but the problem is, no matter what it says, that's what you're stuck with, right? Sorry, hon? I say, like, a number like that, it might say more wrong. Yeah. Right, and my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, you're stuck, whatever the number is, you're stuck with it, right? Yep, that's it. Um, that's why... Okay. Because I was going to ask her... Honeycomb. ...for a case number. Instead, he's ringing me. I'm the cops have ever um, offered a case number to me when I've had issues. I've had to chase them up. Honey from dripping. That was uh, just a bizarre thing. Yeah, it means it's honey and 11.44, of course, is Benjamin. At 11.44? Yeah. Okay. And it says pensioner. It so does. Pensioner. Okay. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Pensioner. Yeah. It's just the, the phone's um, echoing and... Um, That's right. ...carrying on silly. I got on speaker. Yeah. Is that any better? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> now, see, what this is, is um, uh, reality. Absolutely. I did steal my computer. Yep. I did set them up. I never left my computer by itself ever before. No. We never leave the house here unless there's one of us here. And I never left the house because I had no car for I wasn't going anywhere. It was two years I hadn't had a car for. All right. So who could know? You know my driveway and Joel knows my... You know, no one's going to see that I went out anywhere. Yeah. It was dark when we left here. That's right. Hey, I'll tell you another weird thing though. Um, uh, Darren said that when I was talking to Darren about this, um, he said, Lenny's computer got stolen. His computer? Yeah. Well, I had spoken to him. We'd, we'd spent a great deal of time together. Lenny? You and Lenny? No, via, via um, um, Darren. Yeah. He's a friend of Lenny. Uh, yeah, yeah. Him, uh, Lenny and Darren... Uh, obviously, um... It was Lenny Seeds that I grew the forest at Luz. Sorry? It was Lenny Seeds that we grew the forest at oh. Luz's place, which is going to be my property right. as soon as he drops dead. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget to tell him. Okay, I will. Will do. I'll, I'll have great pleasure in doing that one. Hmm. Actually, I'll go out of my way to chase him up. <laughs> it's a place you want to, don't want to go into. It's all full of bleed leeches, right? Yeah. Well, it would have been back then because we that's when we were getting um, flooded here, you know. So it's happening big time. That's right. Um, now, uh, so... So let's talk about the, the radio show. 
Okay, yeah. Um, we have uh, clay feet. Give us a, a, a hash cookie, <laughs> piece of hash cookie, a little tiny bit, to Ash. So I was yeah, go and try it, wasn't I? So she munches on that, and uh, next thing, she can't speak. <laughs> We're going on the radio station, right? She went numb in the mouth. <laughs> numb in the mouth. And I'm talking to Michael, and this other guy's popping in. I thought he was part of the radio program. I didn't know he was anything notorious, which he turns out to be a queen. I didn't right. know who he was. They don't know the guy in town. <laughs> I was gobsmacked. <laughs> oh, dear, what a lunatic. He, he came out and said he was the goddess. He's channeling the goddess. I think, what's this guy on about? <laughs> he's looking at God. He's saying he's channeling the fucking goddess. Oh, my I said how handsome a man he was, too, and he was quite, quite uh, taken back by that. <laughs> I said, you're a very handsome man, Gwenny. <laughs> and then I find out that his son is a teacher over at the school, and I had a conversation then, I told him about his father calling himself the goddess, uh, to God, at the radio station. I said, this is all recorded, you know, I went on YouTube. <laughs> and he agreed his father's a nutter. Yeah. Now this is a teacher from over at the Nimbin school. And uh, what's happened with the homosexual teachers there? Oh, he's still there. Oh, well, oh. he won't be much longer. No, he's, he's back. Uh, you could tell him by, from me, if you like, uh, he'll be dead soon. Um, don't worry about it. The angels haven't forgot, but they're yes. going to take care of the uh, more important uh, oh. demons. Oh, I'll have great pleasure in doing that. I bailed him up. Um, tell him uh, I said that. It was just before New Year's Eve. It might have been the evening. Uh, in the afternoon of New Year's Eve, and he was in the supermarket right in front of me, so he had no choice. He was stuck there. And um, what's his name, by the way? His name is. Um, they call him Mr. E. Um, 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 Mr. E. Yeah, Mr. E. I'll think his name in a second. Anyway, I'll just go on with the story, and then it will come to me. Um, so he's, he's in front of me at the supermarket, and he's trying not to notice that I'm there, and I would go out of my way and strike up a conversation with him. Oh, what are you doing for New Year's Eve, you know? And he goes, oh, um, I was just going to have a quiet one, you know. Oh, and, and me and Amber's there, and we're going, oh, um, we're off to go and visit Christ up to his place for his birthday. He said, no, <laughs> 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 I said, we'll be able to tell you all about it when we come back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just tormenting hell out of him, of course. Well, tell him you've been up here because you are talking to me and would have said the same thing anyhow. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you're here in spirit anyhow. Yeah. And uh, that's cheaper. And I'll tell him, and then I'll give him the message. You don't have to pay for the prep to get up here. Well, Christ said that um, you're a dead man walking and, um, you know, pass the message on. <laughs> <laughs> there's been no homosexuals in paradise. Yeah, just tell him there's no homosexuals in paradise, finish. That's it. And don't worry about it. Yeah, oh. Your angel has got your number, he's coming for you, but he's got some other tasks to, to, to be formed first. But they'll come on you from behind, <laughs> and you should like that. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Tell him exactly that. He cringes when he looks at me. He um I mean before I'd even um found you on the internet through the straw man, um I'd already been into the teachers over there, um, giving them hell of course, uh, for the way they treat the kids. Yeah. And um so they don't like me, of course, for that and now they like me even less, which is <laughs> great. I love the rejection. That's, yeah, right. That means something's happening. Uh, join the club. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I have. <laughs> um, so that's how they feel with Amber as well, you know, because she's got a big mouth and she can't help herself. She goes and stirs it up. She loves it. <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> she, she does. Knows, she knows she's telling the truth. Yeah. So she doesn't have a problem with facing well, with it. Well, tell her what I told you. She'll tell the kids, right? Oh, that's right. So that all these evil <laughs> bastards have got their angel... Right, has been a witness to their performance all their lives. They've seen every just dastardly deed they've ever done. Yep. And they are marked for death. Yep. They're not written in the book of life, right? Yes. Well, and the other angel is coming along, and that is the one that's coming with what we would call Nibiru, but I've said it is Gabriel, yep. bringing the angels back. Yep. Right. I told... Um, I've um, seen another angel yesterday, as a matter of fact. I, I told Nibiru that um, 
sister Evette on the last day of school when I went to pick Amber up from school. She had to bring home all the bits and pieces. So I went over to collect her and he happened to be right there in my face on, on my way out. Um, I, and we were having a really bad weather day here. It wasn't looking good at all. And I told him, I said, oh, well, that's Nebaru. I said, Archangel Gabriel. I said, coming in. Um, I said, so keep the eyes to the sky, you know. <laughs> he looked at me, you know. <laughs> You know, I've always been saying right from the first moment I got on the internet, keep looking up. Yep, that's it. And um, I tell you, there's a lot of people that are looking up at the moment. They can't help it because yeah. um, all the crazy stuff that's happening Did up Did you see the last one we uploaded about the Hawaiian... Uh... Yes. Oh, and straight away, I, I remembered back to when it was Ashra's birthday when you asked her what she wanted for her birthday. And then you just uploaded that video. Um, same thing. Yes. Yeah, same flash of light. What date was it? Um, well, it was just for Ash's birthday when you were asking her, so it would have been just after that. Oh, for Ash's birthday? Yeah, Ash's birthday. Oh, so that'd be the 20th. Yeah, it might have been um, the 21st August. or something. John would probably have that there because remember they took down all the videos? Yeah. Yeah. 2010 or 2011? 2011. Yes, we're at Toowoomba. Right. Yes. So that's to give you a uh, bit of an estimate. So Joel's got the video still um, downloaded there somewhere. Mm. Yes. No, it's great stuff, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's all happening, that's for sure. Is, what's Mr. E's name? You've forgotten again? Um, yeah, I'm still trying to remember. Mr. Edwards, I think his name is. Edwards? Edwards, yes. Yeah. What school is it? At Nimbin Central. I'll track him down. Um, if not, we'll, as soon as Amber comes Maybe I'll send him a death threat or something. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. As soon as Amber comes back, I'll find out his proper name. But he's the deputy principal there, you know? Yeah. And then um, the principal, she's a, a mother with, I think, three or four kids, and she's become gay as well. I mean, <laughs> she wasn't gay when she started What's her school, name? And then all of a sudden the kids have got, got to get used to her being gay. What's her name then? Mrs. Pell. Mrs. Pell. P E double L. Yes. Puffy Pell. Sorry. Puffy Pell. Um, that's echoing a bit for me there. I couldn't quite catch what you said. Puffy. P double O F E Y. P double O F Puff. Sorry. Mary it? Jane, her name's Mary Jane Pell. Mary Jane? Yes. Okay. I just, I just pulled out one of the schools. Well, tell her this is going up on the internet. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, tell her that there is an angel that has reported in to the destroying angel. Yeah. And uh, I should point out that uh, the destroying angel was calling upon my nephew and I didn't stop it. Yeah. I'm just looking for Mr. E's name to see if I could see it here on the documents on the school newsletter thing. Um, and now she's marked for death? Yeah, both of them. But it's, it's, it's so, oh, it's so mind blowing for the kids. Like, I, I don't know how they're handling that one. But I really don't. Well, they won't I think they are handling it actually. I'm, I'm totally disgusted. But, uh, you know, which school do you send the kids to? I don't want to send Amber to any school, but I think if I've got to send her anywhere, that she can do as much damage as she wants to. Well, that's the whole point, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's her mouth that's really given them grief. Well, she is the daughter of royalty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she got your blood, and she's got a father's. And he's what, the uh, descent of the kings of uh, Hungary, isn't Yeah, Verez. His name's Verez, her father's name. How do you spell it? Uh, P-E-R. P-E-R. V. Sorry? V. E-R. V. E-R. Yeah, Ver, Verez. And that is V. E-R what? Um, v. E-R. E-S. E-S. Yeah. Verez. Oh, lovely name, isn't it? Yeah.
What was his first name? Uh, Jay. Uh, uh, it was Charles. Uh, he used to call himself Jay. Um, Jay? Yeah, he called himself Jay. His name was Charles. Yeah. Makes sense. Charles. Charles, uh, Charles is hard to remember, you see. Yeah. <laughs> so now, where's... I'll tell you his... Date of birth. I'm just going to have a look for his... Give me Amber's date of birth, your date of birth. I'll write them all down. Uh, my date of birth is the 25th of the 5th, 59. Right. And I'm just going to look at his documents. I'm just getting it out here. And he's... Um, is that K-A-R-L? Uh, sorry? K-A-R-L? Carl. Carl. What's his name? Yeah. His name is uh, Emery. K or a C? Uh, C. His, his middle name, oh, well, it's Emery Charles Verez. So Emery is spelled E-M-E-R-I-C. Yeah. And Charles, the C, and Verez. That's how I spelled it before. Yeah. And he's, um, uh, just looking for his date of birth. It hasn't got up there. Uh, 27th of March was his date of birth. 27th of March? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, what year? Um, geez, I, I'm, I was trying to look for it here, but it hasn't got it. It's only got it the day he passed away on what I'm looking at. What day did he pass away? Um, it was the 11th of the 3rd, 2008. I was looking at his... Uh, at the 11th of March, 2008. Yeah, but it hasn't got his date of birth on here. It's only got his cremation date. Well, again, they're trying to keep the line... All royal lines are being eliminated. Yeah, well, I think that's what's happened with his line as well, because... They it, probably it, killed him. What did he die of? Um, suppose that, well, it's hard to say because I was lied to, um, but it was supposed to be um, a um, em emerism, a brain em emerism. Embolism. Yeah. But um, he, he said that uh, Amber was like the last descendant, so there's no more. Okay, uh, Amber's birthday? His birthday was the 27th of March. Yeah? Um, I can't remember what year. Sorry, Yahweh. I'm what's happy. your What's your year then? Pardon? Your year of birth. 1959. Yeah. That's near enough. And uh, Amber's birthday? And hers is the 7th, 2002. 7th of the 12th, 2002. Right. In Nimbin? Um, she was in Lismore Hospital. She was born in Lismore. What time? At 7 o'clock in the morning. Were you wearing a watch, was you? Pardon? Was you wearing a watch, watch was you? Uh, um, no, they've got a clock in the room. <laughs> so it's Lism Lismore Hospital, is it? Yes. Well, I was being born... 69 years ago. That's right. I remember this bright light at the end of a tunnel. Years later, I asked my mother, and I said to her, hey, what was it, when I was being born, what was that bright light? It bloody in my eyes, you know. You're kidding. <laughs> no, it was all a joke. And she says, um, um, oh yes, that was the birthing light. I said, yeah, the one with the eight, with the eight thingos, huh? Right? She said, yeah, that's right. <laughs> She counts everything, right? <laughs> oh my God! Oh no! Two twenty-two in the morning. She went to labour at five fifty-five. Like there's a strong, a very strong hello right there. Right? <laughs> yes, I grew up to be two hundred twenty-two pounds. Oh dear me! Yeah. We moved. My first house. We moved on the two hundred twenty-second day of the year. <laughs> wow. Yeah, oh numbers just uh, so synchronised. Yeah. Could anyone deny it? I was nine point four two, no nine four two days, which is Jesus how many times in the New Testament? Yeah. And my sister-in-law is nine point four two years older than me. This has got to be given them Jews a shit by now. 
Oh, it gives everyone the shits, right? <laughs> but I mean, you throw a number at me, so to speak, I'll go to an auditorium with a thousand people, throw me one number, anyone. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, give you an answer right. for it. Yeah. And it's going to do. Yeah, and it's coming right back to me, I can assure you. No matter what number you throw at me. Yep. Yeah. How do you spell it? Um, Everingham. I'm not sure. I, hey, yeah, wait, I didn't go to school much. You know? Well, I didn't either. It doesn't matter. Have a guess. Uh, you know, What's it sound like? Uh, Evering. Everingham. Everingham. Ham. Like, like a leg of ham. Ham. Ham? Ham, yes. Oh, lovely. <laughs> well, tell him as well. Yeah. That the the angel of death hasn't forgotten about you. Well, I I got rid of my father. I got rid of my mother. I got rid of my brother. Hey, I got rid of my nephew. You can tell Amber. She can re, uh, she can report it. Here's Yahweh. He's got a message for Mr. Everingham. Yeah. I didn't. Then that's the decision. Say hello to Amber. Say Yahweh. Yeah, but I don't have any more face. No, no, it doesn't matter. Just listen. Yeah. Happy birthday. Hello, darling. How are you? Good. Oh, good. You're still stirring up those kids down there or not? No, not really. <laughs> not mine, eh? No, no, no. I was hoping you was coming up because we've got all these swans up here for you. We've got 63 swans. Whoa. Yeah. Live on a lake. I know. It's up to you can't make it up there. Well, tell your mum to put you on a bus. Get a bus from Lismore. Pardon? Get a bus from Lismore. Bring one of your mates up with you. Yeah, I wish. But right. it won't let me. <laughs> I'll ask her. Oh, she's passing the phone back. What one of the letters? Eh? Hey? No, we're going to ask. What? What? Send her up on a bus. On a bus? Yeah. Up with that plane. That might be easier. Yeah, yeah, sure. Either way. Okay, but we'll try and organise something with that then. Absolutely. Yeah, depends whether we've got to get past. What about, what about, uh... About, about planes. But not a plane, she says, not, not a plane. <laughs> She'd love to. You should have seen the place light up. We've got 63 swans up there waiting for her. I got them all. We started with seven. Yeah. Right, Amber's coming. I said, I'll get some more swans, so I'll bring some more in. Oh, okay. So we've got 63 of them. Uh, 63 swans, Yahweh's got. Okay. That's enough. He told him? Yeah. Okay. Did he tell you about Mr. Evanham? What did you tell him? He oh. Told me about how I'm going to get up there. Oh, okay. Well, we'll organise something. Yeah. Is she's, she's going, yes! <laughs> about coming up to see you. Yeah. <laughs> she's busting to get up there, I'm telling you. We'll send her up for a couple of weeks. Oh, if you can handle it, no ways. Yeah, no problem. And if she's like back to school, I'll let you write the letter and come back. Back to school. <laughs> Send her up now. Don't worry about bloody school. No, I'm not. I'm not at all. Right. I'm just worried about her um, actually stirring them up when she goes there. I'll, I'll get, when she goes back, I'll have a note for the school. Oh, that'd be wonderful. That'll really, you know, make their year <laughs> that they're not going to have. Sure. Oh, okay, Yahweh. Um, I'll probably. Leave you to it now. Yeah, no worries, Dale. And I hope that you've had a wonderful day because I've oh, it's been, been talking to you. Lovely. You know, if I couldn't make it there, I knew just talking to you on the phone is going to be good. No worries, lovely. Yeah. Glad you called. And um, could you turn that down, please, Amber? Thanks. And um, yeah, and Amber's that's made her day now. <laughs> good. We're going to try and get her up there. How's a little mate going? Pardon? How's a little mate going? Um, she hasn't actually seen her over the holidays. She went away to stay with her father. Her father, yeah. I think, lives up north somewhere. Yeah, on, a, on a, one of the islands. I've been up, Stradbrook Island. Oh, Daddy, that's right. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, I've been up there. Yeah. No, she's turning all the kids up on Stradbrook Island, right? Yeah. But, um, anyway, so, I'll love you and leave you. Right, Adam. And, here, Emma, say goodbye to Yoanne and 
Joel and all the crew. Here we go. Hey, Owen. Hey, darling. How are you going? Good. All right. When are you coming up? Mummy, when am I going up there? Um, as soon as we can... Set, uh, I said you can come up for as long as you like. Yeah. All right? I can go up as long as I like. We've got the beach down the road. We've got the lake here. We're right on the lake. The house is right on the lake. Whoa. You've got a houseboat? I mean a water boat? I mean a, a water house? No, no. The house is built beside the lake. Oh, right. Right? <laughs> we got a grand piano. Is there a beach up there? Yeah, there's a beach. I can. 555 metres away. Oh, 55 metres away. And oh. we've got, we got three bikes. That's the sound of that girl. Oh, I can. <laughs> Mommy, when can I go up? We can organise it, yeah. Can I take my computer? Yes. Can I take Mr. Smurphy? Yep. Yeah, I want to that you'll see you have a Yeah, and they can make me a YouTube site. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, I'll do you too. Love you. I have to go, okay? Yeah. The 27th December, wasn't it? Uh huh. Good up. Love to everyone. Right, Adele. Yeah, seventh, happy the 7th of the seventh of December, wasn't it? Mm hmm. Right, I got him. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> she's, uh, she's happy now. She's now she's got to pester me about when she's going. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to get on to it. <laughs> All right. Oh, um, listen, don't be surprised if you don't get another phone call. There's a couple of other little ones that want to... No worries. Say, happy birthday, God. Okay. Oh, yeah, so you'll know if you get an initial phone call right. who it's going to be. See okay? you, love. See ya. All right. Love you, Saul. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.